Alright, so anyway, start off with beer sausage. Of course, you're going to have beer. And since it's a German dish, the only way to make it is a German beer. I have here Hackershore, which is from the city of Munich in Germany, and in my home opinion, the best beer on the face of the earth. Now, if you're in the Leavenworth area, the only place I know that you can get this is, uh, what's your name? Tiny Liquor Spot on 4th Street. It's 10.50 a six pack, and they are 11.2 fluid ounces, not the usual 12. But anyway, enough of that. So for one, one pot of this is going to serve about four people. You start with uh, four, you need four red potatoes, you need a head of cabbage, an onion, some black pepper, some salt, and some Italian seasoning. Now why, is, why are we using Italian stuff in a German dish? Well, Italian seasoning is just the name that they gave this particular blend of herbs, of herbs and spices. So don't even think of it. Just forget about it. And you're also going to need about a pound of baby carrots. Now I got a two pound bag, but well, we use half of it. Holy crap, man. Alright, so anyway, we're going to start this off. We have a pot. Hey look, it's a pot. Use the cook thing. Take your beer. Since, uh, right, and you actually want to use a good base of about 12 ounces. Unfortunately, like I said, this is 11.2 ounces. So what are we going to do? We're going to crack one of those things. And by the way, the only way to drink German beer is room temperature. Unfortunately, they sell it cold. I've given this a few hours of rest and warm up. So you're going to take your beer, add it to your pot. And it doesn't really matter if it foams too much or anything like that. You're not getting it for the alcohol. You're not getting it for the carbonation. You just want it to get there to to steam and taste. That's the only reason you have this. I already have this on my wall. And that goes into the trash. Now, the beautiful thing about this being 11.2 ounces and forcing you to open the second bottle to reach the 12. Well, that shouldn't be too much to figure out. You see, when you add the rest of it, hey, you still have beer left. And what's that good for? Alright, so anyway, we got the liquid base. Now we gotta worry about these ingredients here. Where are they gonna go? Now, I do kind of compulsively sharpen my knives. I like this knife. It's very good. It's sharp. And when I commence to stabbing, it chips. But anyway, here we go. If you were wondering why I wiped it across the towel, when you sharpen a knife, you don't want the birds that are in there getting into your food. And somebody is very chocolatey behind you. But anyway, so we begin with four red potatoes. Uh, roten Kartoffeln, as they are said in Germany, because that's just cool. And everything that the Germans say is a mouthful, you can't really understand with it. Anyway, so the way we want to cut these, it doesn't really matter. I mean, uh, the way it, you cut them, cut them the way you like it, but me personally, I like to quarter them. I'm not the, I'm not the world's best uh, friggin', I'm not, I'm not one of them friggin' choppy, choppy, choppy guys, okay? So tell me a little slack here. Quarter them, quarter them again. And if you have larger potatoes, I mean, I don't like the huge chunks of potatoes in my stuff. So, I mean, these, these are right about the perfect size here. That's what you're going for. And you just want to chop these up, and we'll add those. We'll add them. Everything gets added in a sequence. We're not going to add anything until so, everything's done correct. You're an onion. Oh, it's an onion. It's not very exactly exotic, but hey, who gives a damn? We're going to go ahead and cut it. Now, the recipe calls for half an onion. I'm an onion sort of guy, so we're going to use this whole onion. Chop it in half real quick. We're going to go ahead and peel it, if I can. This thing's being a little jerk. Oh yeah? <laughs> Chop off the ends here, obviously. And what you're going to be going for when you are dicing this thing up is not really so much of a dice onion sort of thing, you're going to be going for more substantial, long, you know, you want you want an onion with some substance. You don't want it to uh, give you all chunky and choppy. So we're going to go kind of cutting it almost ring style. Not quite that large. However, come on, we are going to cut it up uh, to the point where when you, get it in your, when you get it in the dish, you're going to know you're eating an onion. So anyway, before my cameraman was overcome with a fit of the giggles, um, like I said, you can see here, we have to cut more ring stuff. You have to cut it in a ring style. So like I said, you don't want it too large. So what we're going to do here is we're going to cut it once down the middle. And then we're just going to go ahead, flip it on, like so. And chop it. See if I can do this without slashing my fingers open. I mean, if, you, if I do, oh well, poop happens. So as I said, we want to use the entire onion. And I think I just bulked that up, oh well, hey. You only have one YOLO. And that would be kids say these days. Some bullcrap. Thank you. I didn't, 
want to hear anyway. So anyway, while we're chopping this onion, I want to talk about the, the carrots. Now, I'm just going to talk about those. We'll get to chopping them in here in a minute. You really don't have to chop them, the carrots that is. But to be quite frank with you, I don't like getting humongous <coughs> chunks of carrot in my excuse me in my dishes. So I like to chop baby carrots. Obviously, I'm going to do that off camera because it takes a ridiculous amount of time to chop an entire pound of baby carrots. You know, like I said, I'm no friggin' Emerald Gatsby here. I don't go, you know, there's no friggin' ninja. I'm a ninja, so I ain't gonna be chopping stuff like a like a samurai or nothing like that. It's gonna take me some time. But uh, so like I said, we'll cut the carrots off camera for now. Alright, so anyway, like I said, carrots. As you can see here, I've already chopped a few of them. And uh, like I said, the only reason I really chop the carrots is because I don't like coming across this in my dish. Alright, I mean, that's just personal preference. So I just kind of like, you know, chop them in half and, you know, add them in a little bowl here. Like, you can see obviously that I'm adding everything to bowls because you don't want to start adding stuff until you're ready. And, you know, like, I'm not going to throw in the potatoes and let them soak in the beer even if it's not cooking right, right now. You know, if I'm not ready to add everything else. Because then it's just going to sit there and absorb beer and it's going to get messed up. And, uh, Pretty large. I mean, but well, that's just appearances. For those of you who don't know, and I learned this the first time I cooked this, you don't actually chop up the entire head. Pull off these. Well, thank you. Pull off these outer leaves here. In fact, a lot of the outer leaves, if I remember correctly, until you get something about. You're looking at you like you want to see mostly light colors on the on the cabbage, and you take a nice stem there. And now there's certain ways you can do this. I'm not sure if the way I do it is the right way or the wrong way. Ask me if I care. I do it the way it works for me. And because I'm German, I can get away with that. Anyway, the way I like to do it is well, like once again, kind of kind of like with the potatoes, but not quite. Because this thing has a core to it. And you really, I mean, I personally, I don't like messing with the core so much. So what I'll do is chop the sides off. You know, to surround the core. Like so. And then, uh, I chop a little bit too little off. Hey, that works, you know. See, and then about, I'm going to say about half of this one is going to be useful to you. The rest is pretty much just solid cabbage leaf. And you don't want, like, you know, you ever get, like, the big chunks of cauliflower or broccoli or something like that, and you just get, it's like a big old chunk of it. Do you want, you want the leafy part? Do you want the... You want the, 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 the crunch and everything like that. I mean, I like my cabbage a certain way. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and chop this up. What you want to do is you want to just dice it fine. So, I mean, you got you have decent sized leaves, but they're not too big. So I'll use um, that out of the way there. I'll use this little guy right here. And you don't want to worry about, I mean, see, like, this is about the size you want to go for. Just like this. So that's going to be perfect when it goes into the day. You can be a fussy back there. And Mr. Fussy Britain. That is talking to you. talking to somebody. So anyway, we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and chop this up for you. We're gonna put it in some bowls and we'll come back when this is all done. We'll start mixing spices. Right, so anyway, I totally forgot that we had to chop up the sausage. I mean, I really forget, but I forgot to mention it. So that being said, I have a big effing knife and I have a big effing sausage. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna chop these puppies now. I have to shamelessly plug this place <coughs> because, as far as I know, it's the only place within like 100 miles of Kansas City to get authentic German or, I mean, uh, European, but mostly German uh, cooking supplies. Warner's Fine Sausages in Mission, Kansas on Johnson Drive. Got to hit the place up. They uh, they make a mean, uh, they make some mean stuff. It's really great there. They have everything that they have is imported from, you know, Germany, Austria, Sweden. Uh, the recipes are authentic German, Austrian, and Sweden. Oh, who would have guessed? Um, you know, French, whatever have you. When they make their sausages, they make, I mean, they make their own sausages, and this is, uh, for the beer sausage, we have kielbasa here. So, we're going to go ahead, and we're going to chop these puppies. We're going to chop them, you need about a pound of kielbasa, or bratwurst, whatever you want, whatever, whatever type of sausage you really want. Um, I prefer the kielbasa, because it goes really well with the, 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 um, the rest of the ingredients. 
So what we want to do here is I have uh, two bowls that we're going to add. Obviously, you can see, like I said, we're putting everything in the bowl. So I have two bowls here that are ready to receive my sausage. I can't keep a straight face with that. All right, so we're going to cut it. The way you want to cut it is you want to cut it in about, oh, this stuff is not really being conducive to cutting, but hey, we'll, we'll work with it. About pieces about this big here. So, I mean, yeah, this is definitely not the pre-cooked sausage that you would get at, uh, say, the commissary, which, let's, let's be honest with ourselves here, the commissary is not a good place to shop for food. So, um, a lot more difficult to cut this stuff in its uncooked form than, say, your stuff from Hillshire Farm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab myself a curving knife. And hopefully, this puppy will do what my little chopper right there could not. So, like I said, you want you want them about an inch thick. See, it's not doing much. Well, it's doing a little bit better, so just keep at it. It's about an inch thick, and uh, we'll go ahead and we'll cook all this up. It's just knocked over my beard. That would have been a tragedy right there. Never waste food, Jeff and beer. So uh, I'll go ahead and cut this up, and we'll come back to you when I'm ready to do the spice. And spraying juice all over the place. Hey, that's cool. Anyway, you notice I only have one bowl of sausage. Well, I didn't need the other bowl. It filled up that one. I'd rather have it not needed than needed not have it. So anyway, as I drink some more of this wonderful beer. Seasonings. Like I said, Italian seasonings. Now, I know mean, you get a nice little hole for pouring it, but we're not going to use that because we, uh, we're we going to do something. We're going to do it, do it right, right? So you need quite a bit of this stuff. And I got my little dish here. No, 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 maybe a little bit more. Why not? Less is more. Or more is less. I don't know. One of those things. Anyway, like I said, I'd rather have it not need it than need it not. So you have Italian seasoning. You want some black pepper. And you want a decent amount of that as well. You want a little bit of, I mean, if you want, you can add like paprika or whatever sort of other seasonings you want to to this. Because, I mean, what recipes handed down over the years, you got you to know they're customized. I mean, this book here, this cookbook that I got from Werner's, you know, there's 50 different recipes, there's actually hundreds of recipes in there. But if you look through it, there's six different recipes from this other guy. But uh, what we're going to do, we, like I said, we got your Italian seasoning. We, uh, if you want to zoom in on that or get that in the picture here, you don't really have to zoom right in. Let's just take a look at that. You have, we put a generous amount of Italian seasoning in there and a generous amount of black pepper. And of course, you have to have salt. Now, put in just a little bit of salt here. And then what I like to do, obviously, right now, you got it in layers. So you just kind of mix it around a little bit till you get a good, uh, till you get a good mix there. You get the salt, pepper, and the Italian seasoning all mixed in together so that when you go to pour it, or when you go to distribute it, it's all even. Now, keep in mind that when you're doing this, pepper is a powder. Couldn't jump up and hit you in the nose. So, if you're going to sneeze, don't sneeze in your seasoning bowl. I'm holding it in, and I don't know how successful I'm going to be at that. Anyway, so what we have here is we have our cabbage, we have our onions, we have our potatoes, carrots, our sausage. And of seasonings. I always feel at this point that I'm forgetting something, but the hell with it. So, come back over here to our beer. What you're going to want to do, go ahead and ignite your flame. Make sure you keep that on as high as you can. I'm just going to leave this for a minute while we get the beer to boil. And as soon as the beer boils, we're going to take it down a notch and we're going to start adding our ingredients. I'll come back to you when it's boiling. Alright, so here we are. We boiled our beer. And what's the purpose of that? Just so you know, the purpose of boiling the beer in the first place is one, to bring it up to temperature, and number two, you want to boil off all the alcohol, because if you're cooking for kids, you don't want to get them drunk. Although that might be fun, it's also illegal. So, first thing we're going to do is you want to take a shot of that. Look at that frothy beer, it's simmering away there. And the uh, first thing we're going to add is we're going to add the potatoes. So, you know, we're going to take the potatoes, unceremoniously dump them in there. Of course, don't splash yourself with boiling beer, that would probably be pretty stupid of you. Anyway, you take your little bowl of seasoning and you sprinkle some on there. First layer. Second layer, we have our onions. I'm going to go ahead and unceremoniously dump those in there too, although, well, kind of ceremoniously, because you want to get them spread out over the first layer as best you can. Now, granted, I just failed at that, but hey, you know what? Stuff happens. 
So you take a look in there. And once you get the, you, every single layer, you know, if you're not detecting a pattern, you add your spices. You add a little bit more spices. And then we're going to go ahead and make sure my dang old flame is still on. Okay, those three. Leavenworth housing, uh, yeah, they, okay. Anyway, carrots, hey, look at that, what's next? Dump in your carrots. Okay, I don't remember off the top of my head what the German word is for that, but, uh, oh well. So we add seasoning if you can't tell if I got that. Yeah, the layer of seasoning for every layer of ingredient that you put in here. Now the meat. You can go ahead and add this. And you're not really too worried whether or not the, uh, the beer, will, the beer will not cover every single layer. In fact, you really only want it to cover the potatoes because you want them to soak up that beer, that flavor, and everything like that. And everything else will just steam in the in the beer and well, the vapors from the beer. So you know, you throw in your sausage, and like I said, it's a little bit more difficult because it's uncooked. But you know, Hillshire Farms is not exactly authentic German, Polish, European, whatever. You know, they're American. They're an American company. And, I mean, the reason I really got into cooking European style is, I mean, have you ever seen a fat European? No, you haven't. Because they don't cook with MSG and, you know, the calorie counting. You go to McDonald's in, Euro in Europe and you're not going to find a Big Mac and a, you know, well, of course you wouldn't find a Whopper because there's burgers. But anyway, you know what I'm getting at. So, it's healthier. And it just, to me, it just tastes better. And plus, you know, Germany is, is my heritage. I am German, so I got into this. Now... If we take a look in the pot here, we can see our sausage, we can see our, we can see, you know, you can't really see much of else, so you see an onion in there, but the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our cabbage. Now, I took the time while I was slicing it up to kind of separate it, you know, a little bit by the leaves and everything like that, but quite honestly, you really don't need to do that. You can just toss it in there. The reason I did it is, number one, to save space, and number two, just because I'm obsessed with compulsive about that. And quite honestly, it'll fall apart while it's cooking. So you just toss in your cabbage, and the baby starts being mad at you because you're not paying 100% attention to him. Toss in your cabbage, and you drop some, and then it starts on fire, and you burn the house down. But barring that, barring that, toss in your cabbage, dump in the rest of your seasoning, and you don't want to really worry about over seasoning it because it's all going to cook in. And it doesn't really say to do this, but I like to do this. Top it off with a little bit of beer. Just kind of wash it all down. And then what we're going to do is cover it. Turn the heat up just a tad. And we're going to set, we're gonna, it's going to stew for 45 minutes. And after that, we'll check on it periodically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up my mess here. And uh, we'll come back and we'll check in every so often to see how we're doing, okay? Alright, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and check on our uh, on our beer sausage here. And this is Mr. William. I wanted to name him Klaus, but hmm, life is full of compromise. So anyway, he's going to help me cook today. Uh, we're going to take a look at this, and this is about exactly what you want to see here. You can see some of the stuff bubbling, maybe a little, the heat may be a little high on there. But that's what your cabbage is going to look like. I remember before it was almost overflowing the pot, and now it's cooked down something a bit more manageable. I'm going to go ahead and just inch the heat down and make sure that it's still on because, like I said, Leavenworth housing, that thing will turn off quicker than something. So anyway, we've got about eight more minutes here and then we'll come back and we'll pull this thing off the fire and we'll get to eating it. So, 45 minutes has elapsed. Our beer bars here should be done. Let's go ahead and check on it. I already, I already went ahead and turned off the heat. Ow, that's hot. Hey. News flash, metal pan, metal pot lid, after being on a fire for 45 minutes, is hot. You can burn yourself. So don't be stupid like I just was. Alrighty here. So we got a good view of it. I think you already filmed that. Now, keep in mind that this is not a stew or a soup. So you want something to serve it. You want something like this. You don't want, for instance, this. This is not what you're going for. You really don't want to make it. What? really don't want to get the juices in there with them, or with the, with the rest of the food, so I mean, we're going to go ahead and we're going to mix it up here, look at, look at this, look at that. That is how real sausage comes out right there. Stir everything up, and now you won't really actually see the onions, that's kind of the reason I, I used an entire onion instead of a half an onion like it calls for, because 
it the, the taste of the onion kind of gets lost and everything everything else is going on in there but I mean if you use an entire onion you can kind of get that that tangy the bite from it even though it has been steamed so that being said mm, god delicious so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get ourselves a nice heaping bowl of this ow let's see look at me I'm burning myself and flinging crap all over the place Welcome to the Sauerkraut Kitchen. Okay. So there we have it. Nice steaming bowl of beer sausage. And if you're wondering if you need to serve this with anything, quite honestly, you don't. This stuff will also keep for quite a long time, so all you gotta do, I mean, you, I can just throw the lid on this pot, stick it in the fridge, and that stuff will keep for about a week, maybe, maybe a little bit longer. And to heat it back up, you use your standard microwave, um, or you can throw it back on the stove if you want, but then you also have to worry about overcooking uh, the cabbage and the potatoes and everything like that when you re-simmer the beer. So, that's it. This has been Sauerkraut. Thanks for watching.